Hey there, Sonia here. Welcome back to another episode of the Help I Am Artist podcast. In the Northern Hemisphere, summer is speedily approaching. I can't tell you how welcome summer is, or even spring for that matter. We've had such a dark and wet winter time that we're looking forward to going outside and seeing some sunshine and enjoying outside life. Around this time of year, everyone's busy with their holiday plans. Like, where am I going to spend the summer months? Where am I going to go to escape the dredge and the drudge of the, the wet weather? And I know when I go on vacation, I love to enjoy different cultures and savor the local foods and enjoy the languages that I hear. And when I come back, I see things through different eyes. I walk into my house and I think, is this really my house? I never saw that the tree in my yard had become so big and that my coffee table is off center or the beautiful color of my couch. So when you come back from vacation, you get inspired to renovate your house or to, to renovate your garden or to change your lifestyle even. You feel alive and the experiences that you had in your holiday have changed you. Art is the same impact. People look at a painting or listen to a song or visit a ballet and this experience gives the audience something to see that they haven't seen before. They see the world through different eyes. As an artist we have the ability to transport the viewer beyond the ordinary, beyond the mundane and show them a world through new eyes to transport in them into an experience that they can see the world through your eyes. As an artist, you turn an ordinary vista or a subject into a new moment of revelation for your audience. How cool is that? In order for us as artists to create this experience, we first need to capture it ourselves. If we want our audiences to close their computers and switch off their phones and look up and pay attention, we need to do this first. As artists, we need to slow down. Slow down long enough to see. Slow down long enough to really see. We need to take the time to see things through different eyes. See things in a new perspective, breaking down the expected and express it in such a way that it sheds new light, new revelation and new insights. To reveal what is actually there but is missed by so many that are rushing past. Maybe you're listening to this podcast while sitting at your desk or on the treadmill at the gym or sitting in the car or riding in the train or in a plane. Wherever you are, let's do an exercise. Just be careful if you're driving. I want you to find an object, something mundane that's lying there in front of you, a coffee mug or your water bottle or maybe your watch, or some kind of furniture. And I want you to have a look. What do you see? Is there re light reflecting on it? And what are the colors? Or maybe you see your own reflection. What do you see? What do you really, really see? Take time to have a look at the object and see something and discover something that you haven't seen before. In the Netherlands, it's a season of rainbows. The light is just at a certain angle that it perfectly reflects off every ever-present water drop and especially when it's projected against a dark sky it creates an impressive breathtaking colorful arc so beautiful but it always surprises me that so few people actually are looking up they're not stopping their cars or their bikes or their lives in order to have a look I get the urge to start regulating the traffic pointing to the sky and saying hey look up there have a look and see this beauty as artists we stop and take note and we get it down we get it down on paper or on canvas or in sound bites students often say to me I can't paint that I can't draw that I'm not a master painter I can't do that or compose this or display that but being a master painter is not about painting like the masters but mastering that what you have. I'll repeat. Being a master painter is not like painting like the masters. You don't have to be Rembrandt. You don't have to be Vermeer. You don't have to be Degas. But you have to master that what you have. What do you have? For an artist to be interesting, you need to have something to say. What do you have to say? What do you see? 
and what do you have to say? An artist needs to meet with himself or with herself. You need to meet yourself and see beyond the surface of a subject and discover what you have to say and how you want to say it. As an artist you need to master contemplation. You need to master reflection and master interpretation. In other words you need to see. You need to really see beyond the surface. We need to cast our own vision on a subject and get it out and pull it up out of ourselves and put it down on paper, down on canvas, down in a piece of clay or down in music notes. You may think, well, why does this really matter? Why does my art matter? And why does art matter at all? Artists are great problem solvers, great inventors. Artists have courageous hearts, disturbing and upsetting the old ways while illuminating new ways, casting new light, coming up with new solutions and breaking open new paths to bring about a better understanding. Now, how cool is that? I think art matters and it should matter to you. If you're an artist and you have an artist's heart, what you have to say matters. Find your voice, find what you love to say, find out what you're passionate about and start getting it out and start it expressing it creatively. Research has shown that a country or a culture where artists are creative and creativity is embraced and encouraged is a strong and healthy and innovative nation. Allow me one moment to indulge some praise and appreciation for the Netherlands. Some people f even find it hard to find us on a map. Although we are the size of a postage stamp, it is noticed that the Netherlands is the fourth richest nation in the world. The world! Now bear with me. It's not because we have endless supplies of natural resources or the sun shines every day. No, well definitely not that. Or because we have a huge population. No, it's because for centuries the Dutch have thought outside of the box. Our box was not very big to start off with. The limitations became our strengths. We were forced to think creatively in order to survive. This creative spirit has brought about great innovation, a new way of thinking. And innovation has become one of our biggest export products. Imagine that, that innovation can be an export product. A nation that values art and nurtures artists, actively cultivating an atmosphere in which artists and art can thrive, in turn is a thriving nation. I believe that our attitude towards the arts and creativity is a thermometer that measures the health of a nation or a culture. And what's true for a nation is true for its people. In order to encourage and nurture this art spirit, a creative, inventive, self-expressive, healthy mind, we need to start with our schools. Developing a healthy artist's starts with our education. I recently heard that the university I attended wanted to close their art department because it was no longer relevant. The government no longer wanted to fund it and there were not enough teachers to keep the department going. I find this news terribly disturbing and so so sad. When the art departments st start closing a culture is in trouble. Unfortunately, the first thing to go when education budgets are cut is often the art program. Focus and priority is given to the exact subjects like language or science or maths. And I agree that maths and science and languages are important, but taking art out of the school curriculum is more harmful that we, than we can suspect. The classroom is an incubator of our imagination, nurturing aspirations and sparking dreams and preparing young minds for the world and what the world is expecting from them. When a teacher creates an environment in her, his or her classroom, a place where children are encouraged to think up answers to problems and to express their own views, instead of regurgitating pre-selected answers, children take ownership there is a realization that they can contribute and that they've become part of the solution instead of adding to the problem. 
I want to be a teacher that does not only teach my te students what I know, but I want students to teach me what they know, finding out the answers that lie inside of them. Children are so creative, they develop their own thoughts and ideas quickly. I have taught many children in creative expression, and I'm always amazed at the solutions and the possibilities and the boundless abundance that they come with. You put a child in a soapbox and you say, how does it feel to sit in a soapbox? They give you this puzzled look and they say, it's not a soapbox, it's a sports car, it's a jet plane, it's my spaceship. Okay, I think I'm really humbled. My imagination needs a makeover and really has become far too mature and serious. I need to turn more of my soapboxes into spaceships. Let's make our classrooms a place where creative thinking is promoted. But teaching art is not easy. It really takes extra energy and commitment from teachers. One and one is two is a given. But the unknown and the variables that come with art can be intimidating. Because the arts create more questions than answers, it can make teachers feel insecure as classes require more dialogue and participation. But the rewards are immeasurable and it will nurture a healthier, happier character in a child, one that embraces change and finds solutions. One that finds more than one solution. As parents or as teachers, we should give children options instead of them coming up with one solution or pat them on the head for one right answer. We should inspire them to take risks, to think outside the box, instead of taking the safe, predictable way. Composer Morton Feldman put it this way, In life, we do anything to avoid anxiety. But in the arts, we must pursue it. In the arts, we have no guarantees. The lack of answers force us forward. If there's ever been an age that we need solutions, it's today. With our climate changing, problems in elderly care, our dwindling resources and overconsumption, to name but a few. We need young minds to start to see what really is at hand and turn soapboxes into spaceships and create solutions. Imagine we had schools filled with students that were so confident that they would express their true selves and that there were teachers courageous enough to encourage these students to reach deep down inside themselves and to find solutions that we give a framework that we give tools and skills to be able to express themselves in a powerful strong and fluent way i love the example of teacher lindsay azola at the beginning of every school year she starts by drawing an apple on the board and then she tells her students to draw an apple and the majority of her class copy her apple, her exact apple. The rest of the school year she takes them on a journey. She shows them dozens of ways to draw their apples. She mimics different styles. She takes them to surrealism, impressionism, a pop art version of the apple, a realistic version of the apple, and she uses watercolor, stipple technique, line drawings and melted wax. They use glitter and they stamp and they use yarn. Endless possibilities. And this is more than just a lesson in art history. As the semester continues, the students are encouraged to mix and match the techniques. And in the final class, teacher Isola draws an apple on the board again and asks the students to make an apple. But this time, nobody copies the teacher's apple. Instead, the classroom has become a gallery of different apples, of different ideas, of possibilities, of self-expression. The students have taken what they have learned and have taken it into their own direction. I love the subtitle of Anthony Brandy and David Eagleman's book, The Runaway Species. It reads... How Human Creativity Remakes the World They ask some fascinating questions in this book about the human brain 
And what's so special about the human brain that it enables us to innovate? Have you ever thought, why don't cows choreograph dances? Or why squirrels don't build elevators to their treetops? I love this book. One of the quotes in their book reads, An art education in creativity lies in a sweet spot between the unstructured play and imitating models. The teacher Isola gave the students a reference, a 1 plus 1 is 2, but allowed them to take this fact, this absolute, and use it as a foundation which they could build their own vision. They could express themselves and find a way, new ways of expressing the apple. The more we allow our children to make, discover and express in the classroom, the more they will see themselves as makers of this world, the more they will see themselves makers of their own world. Creating ownership and encouraging responsibility for the world around them. If you were an orphan or destitute in the 16th century Naples, you would find yourself in the care of fondling homes, and these homes were run by church charities. These religious institutes took it upon themselves to teach children tradable skills. They were trained in music and in arts, as music and arts were in high demand in 16th century Italy. Children were asked to play in concerts and in church services and at social gatherings. Conservatory, like we know our Conservatory for the Arts, actually comes from the Italian word conservatori which actually means orphanage. Children were taught to improvise with partimenti, short patterns that could be repeated and combined and used to improvise. They learned how to compose and how to write music. Later music students came from all over the world to study art and literature and music in Italy. It still saddens me that so few people have access to art education. Affluent students have access. They have campuses filled with music and dance and the visual arts and theater, while in poorer neighborhoods, an art education is often considered a waste of money. Katerina Schwartz, a journalist, gives an account of what creativity did for a school and a neighborhood in Vermont, in the USA. In a poor suburb in Vermont, a local school was struggling to survive. The students had low grades and there was a high dropout rate. The teachers faced great problems with discipline. In a last effort to save the school, the director took an unexpected approach. He decided to incorporate arts in the curriculum. At first the teachers weren't amused and there was great resistance. They matched the teachers alongside active working artists who shared their skills and trained the teachers. In a few years the school had an extensive music, dance, drama and visual arts program with creative projects tied to each. In the science class they studied leaves and the patterns of the leaves and in the art classes they drew the vein-like structures of the leaves and made patterns in their artworks and in the ceramic class they made over a hundred ceramic pots which they in turn filled with soup and served with bread to the community. Art students studied the angles in paintings of Kadinsky and young dancers took these angles as inspiration and choreographed and performed a musical in the local theatre. Every Friday the school has an art celebration. In four years of the art program, two-thirds of the students passed their grades and met state standards. Students were more engaged and happier and parent participation increased. Parent-teacher meetings went up from 40 to 90 percent. Discipline problems declined and the dropout rates decreased. The city noticed. The neighborhood changed. It had an effect on the whole social makeup. House prices increased. Crime and unemployment decreased. Just such a beautiful example of how art and art education not only changes students, but it changes neighborhoods, and it has effect on the culture, has effect on a neighborhood, can affect on a, on a city and on a nation. 
Education is no longer about just looking back or learning the facts, but we need to look forward. Creativity is not a spectator sport. It's not something passive, but we need to participate. It activates us. We need to be given permission to explore and to create and to express. Not just regurgitate numbers and regurgitate facts, but we need to think and to develop our own thoughts and our own vision and be allowed to express this. Better art and art programs and art education makes better engineers, better innovators, better nurses, better mechanics. If art is taught, we don't only develop creative thinkers, but we also embed a deep appreciation for art. One day these young minds will go into business, or they'll become politicians, or civil servants, or they'll become parents, and they would have learned to see. They would have learned to see art, value art, and in turn buy art. They become our patrons. I'm so grateful for my mom that stimulated our creativity. In the weekend she would empty out the garage and invite kids from the neighborhood to come and paint, to come and draw and come and try out different techniques. We did tie and dye and bartic and painting and drawing and we worked with clay. Nothing was frowned upon and the motto was just, just express yourself. I had the privilege that my parents gave us opportunities to study music, take ballet lessons and go to speech and drama classes. And on my 16th birthday I got my first sewing machine and I learned how to make my own clothing. I see the results in my sister and how she raised her son. She always encouraged her son to express his own ideas, to think out the box and to find solutions. On family outings this young boy would be the one picking up the litter on the beaches and frowning and commenting when he saw me drinking soda from a plastic straw. Auntie Sonia, he would say, do you know how many straws end up in the ocean and that are choking and killing our fish? He is in his final year of high school and wants to study marine biology. He has a passion for the sea and everything living in it. He is taking ownership. It is his sea. It is his planet and he wants to play a part in preserving it. I've had the awesome privilege of being part of many creative projects, projects with children, art projects with adults, and I've seen firsthand the impact art and creativity can have, not only in the young minds, but in everybody that is open enough, brave enough and daring enough to start expressing themselves. This is why I love teaching, this is why I love mentoring. That's why I love sharing my heart and mind. The more creativity we stimulate and nurture, the more bountiful the expanse of our human imagination. Imagine all the discoveries we've missed, all the mysteries that still baffle us, and all the problems that remain unresolved because it hasn't been imagined, because this hasn't been nurtured and the creativity hasn't been stimulated. Maybe your school never had a budget for an art program. Maybe didn't grow up in a creative environment. Don't despair. There's still time. It's never too late. Today is a perfect time to start. Maybe you're way past school going age. Or maybe you're a parent of children. Or maybe you're an aunt or a grandparent. We all have young children in our lives. And we need to encourage and stimulate and facilitate creative thinking. Take them to a museum. Spend an afternoon painting with them or making music. Last summer I had my nephew from Australia stay with us for two months. As we spent days catching up, he mentioned how he enjoyed our painting and drawing sessions together when he was a child. Even though he was now an adult, this memory was still so vivid one that had stayed with him all those years. I'm truly grateful for the art teachers in my life and I think it's time to give a little shout out to my art mentors. One that I remember so clearly is Miss Fouri. She was my favorite teacher at high school. She was my art teacher. A passionate teacher encouraging and stimulating us to follow our art hearts. If by some miracle she would listen to this podcast someday, I really want to thank her. Thank her for pouring out herself and stimulating 
and igniting my art heart. I see that she's still a beautiful working artist and I'll link to her website in the notes at the end of the podcast and on my website. Humphrey Bennett is another teacher I really appreciate. He's a teacher that I studied with recently in my hometown. He studied in the UK but now resides in the Netherlands. He's a passionate teacher of the drawing and painting of the human figure. Every Friday he can be found drawing the dancers at the National Ballet Academy in Amsterdam. And then last year I met Mandy Hellenius, the co-founder of the Da Vinci Initiative, a wonderful non-profit art education foundation that provides skill-based training to art teachers all around the USA. A big must because art teachers in the US often don't learn any skills to pass along to their students. She believes that the most creative children are the ones with the most tools at their disposal and advocates for teaching technical drawing, sculpting and painting skills in the classroom. The Da Vinci Initiative works with teachers nationally and internationally through online classes and art education and district-wide workshops. Another shout out to Marion de Jong. She's a good friend of mine. She's the mother of now three grown-up children and enjoys being a grandmother to her grandchildren. She saw the need for more skill-based art education in the Netherlands and started the Dutch Art Academy. She believes that high-quality art is built on a solid foundation. She is a working artist and has taught many workshops in many nations. She has an amazing online school where she mentors and teaches students these powerful foundations. We get together a few times a month to talk about art and because we share the same faith we take time to pray together. She has encouraged me many times to keep going and to keep pursuing the best. In a few weeks I will be interviewing Marion. She will be a guest on my podcast and she will share more about her artist story, why she started the Dutch Art Academy and how she sees art in the future. I will share her details and the details of the other artists I mentioned in the notes on the podcast on my website. We all need cheerleaders in our life. Do you have someone cheering you on? What steps do you need to take to find a mentor or to find a teacher? What do you need in order to take the next step in growing and developing your creativity? Fortunately, the internet has changed the way we learn. There are many courses available for you to follow and there are online mentoring programs and master classes you can subscribe to. Find a class, find a mentor, find a place to learn and develop your skills. And remember we are all different, we have different ways of learning. You may love learning from books or love learning from YouTube or you may love learning in a classroom, in a workshop. Find the way that works for you. Maybe you never had art at school or access to an art teacher or art classes. It's never too late and the possibilities are endless. So why is it important to take an art class? An art class is important to teach you something. Maybe logical, but maybe you're already paralyzed by the fact that you can't do something. The fact that you can't do something is because you haven't learnt it and an art class will facilitate and give you the skills that you need to learn and to develop and to grow. In an art class you start to see things not only through your eyes but see things through other people's eyes. For example if you do your work and it gets critiqued you'll start seeing why things work and why things don't work in your work and the work of others. An art class is the perfect setting to confront fears, to deal with rejection, to deal with the constant comparison and perfectionism and start building a good, healthy art character. And finally, an art class is great to develop your own style. You see different signatures and you see different students and you see the teacher, everyone has their own unique style. And just by practicing and putting those skills to use, you can develop your own style. Last week, a young art student approached me. She had a school assignment to interview a working artist. Of course, I said yes, 
I love spending time with young minds, especially art students. They remind me so much of myself when I started my artist journey. I especially remember having more questions than answers. One question this talented young lady asked me in the interview is still resonating in my heart and got me inspired to make this podcast. The question she asked, would I recommend the younger version of myself to pursue a career in the arts and would I have done anything differently? A good question I thought and a definite wholehearted absolute yes to the first question and to the question what I would do differently I would only be more passionate I would tell myself to take myself serious to take my art serious and to do whatever it takes to learn and to grow my in my art to develop my skills and to create every day and not to be too concerned with the opinions of others and I would find a mentor sooner and stop being so stubborn and believe that I need to do everything all by myself. I would definitely enjoy every brush stroke more, every color I mixed and don't be so busy with myself and trying to be perfect that I can't get past these thoughts and feelings and get stifled to put something down on paper. I would definitely play more, I would definitely laugh more and I would definitely worry a lot less. I realized that I had so much to be grateful for and that it's never too late to paint more, to laugh more and to love more. I hope you are inspired to embrace your artist's heart and even though you didn't go to art school and had no art program or were not surrounded by art, that it's never too late. Or maybe you are an artist but the busyness of life has blown sand into your eyes and you have trouble to see why you should even bother to create. Why you should even bother to be an artist? Well, I hope this helps you to see that what you do is important, that what you make is relevant, and that we are waiting for your creativity to remake the world. I have designed this special worksheet for you to download. The questions will help you reconnect with your creativity and teach you to learn to see like an artist. In order to download the worksheet, go to www.sonyasmallhere.com slash 004. For more links, tips and resources, you can surf over to my website www.sonyasmallhere.com Be inspired and have fun turning your soapboxes into spaceships. Look forward in connecting with you soon. Bye for now.